Okay, good morning or good evening, everyone, uh, as the case may be. Um, welcome to week two of the Writing Wikipedia articles class. I see there's uh, not as many people on this week, and, uh, and we're a little concerned that we may have uh, not gotten the link up in a way that people are able to find it. It seems like there's maybe a a bug that makes it not show up until you log into your Wikipedia account. Um, did did people have difficulty connecting this week? Hi, Glenn. Jeanette, do you want to just so that we're aware of of what's going on? Do you want to let us know what uh, what happened? So I'm a little concerned that there's only a few people here. The link, okay, so this is the link that you found on. Okay. Uh, Peter, yeah. I can explain then, it to so you. Glenn, you... Once you. Okay. Well, I guess if you understand it, I guess that's all we need, Sarah. If you know what's going on, then we don't need to, um, we, we can talk about it offline later and, and find a way to. Yeah, I, but just so people understand, it's 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 a bug in in the system because we're using a fairly new component of the Wikipedia platform. So we're sort of taking it to a test drive for them, and this seems to be a fabulous new glitch we found. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad that those of you who are able to come uh, have made it and uh, hopefully everyone else will be able to see it in the archive. Um, and so let's just get started. Um, I, I wanted to begin with a, uh, with a review of some of the things that have been on the talk page. Have, have people, has everyone here uh, found the course talk page? Uh, there have been a number of students who have been posting questions and comments and ideas. Uh, and I thought we could just take a look at some of the things that have come up there uh, and if anyone here has, has questions, uh, we can look at those as well. Um, and then I, I'd like to finish up some of the things we didn't quite get to last week. I know that, uh, that some people really had some difficulty in getting their user page started and getting in touch with their team because we really rushed through some things. So I want to be sure that, uh, that I cover everything that we wanted to last week and then we're going to move into uh, some discussion around, uh, around identity and anonymity and, um, and expertise and, uh, and conflicts of interest on Wikipedia. Basically, who, who edits Wikipedia and uh, how you should go about editing in relation to your work uh, and, and your other, uh, your online persona. So uh, I have, let's see, I have the discussion page pulled up. I'm going to start the, uh, the web sharing components. Okay, so this is our talk page, and uh, just to remind everyone, you can always find this by typing in the shortcut wt colon wiki su. Anywhere in Wikipedia, if you type that in, it's going to bring you to this page, which is our central discussion page for the whole class. Uh, and just looking at the table of contents, this is going to give you an idea of what people have been bringing up. Uh, there was some discussion of watching the archive session from, uh, from week one. Uh, we had a, a suggestion there that we publish it on YouTube, which I did manage to do. Um, I did that for the, the class session last week. I tried to do it for the lab session, and I ran into some difficulty. But I think I have a new way of doing that this week, that, uh, that we should be able to post those immediately. Uh, every time we do something going forward. So if you're having any difficulty with the Blackboard software and want to watch the archives in review, you should be able to watch more easily on YouTube going forward. Um, we had a, a question about setting up accounts. We had a, a couple of people who want to take the class who are native Spanish speakers, so they formed a team uh, specifically for Spanish speakers. Um, we had a question about the enrolled uh, feature on the uh, on the education page, and that's something that uh, 
uh, that while it's good to enroll uh, enroll for the class formally here on Wikipedia, if you're having trouble with it, don't worry about that because that's not going to really come into play until later in the class when you uh, when you choose your main article. Um, but if you do want to figure it out, you'll you'll find the answer here on the discussion page. And then we had some we had a question about the signature line, so uh, and about whether we could create a redirect to the home page, which unfortunately we can't make a fully functional redirect. Um, that's a that's a feature on Wikipedia that lets you type in one name and get to another page. It's a way of sort of making shortcuts within Wikipedia. And again, we have there's a sort of a technical limitation that prevents us from doing that nicely. That's why we have the the shortcut on the j.mp site that I uh, have told you, j.mp slash wikisu uh, is your easiest way to get to the main course page. Um, and then there was some discussion about whether uh, about how teams should communicate with each other. And this is something that uh, this is this is the thing that I probably rushed through the quickest last week. And I, I, I'd like to take a little time to talk about that today. Um, the idea of dividing up into teams. This is something that we didn't do in the last session, but uh, but it, it, from some student feedback, uh, we thought it would really be a good idea to get people into teams where they can work with each other and figure things out together uh, from early on in the class. Uh, but it may be that uh, it may be that we didn't give you enough enough guidance on how to get in touch with your team. So I guess what I'd like is a, a quick maybe people can use the the hand raising feature here in the chat window. Um, I'd really be interested in whether people were able to make contact contact with their teams at all. Uh, okay, so. Well, I see so I, I guess why don't you raise your hand if you were able to make contact with your teams? I'm sorry, I wasn't clear there. So I see a few people raising their hand. Okay. Okay. Well, we have about about half. So I don't know if the others are having trouble finding the the hand raising feature or um, or we're not able to to contact their teams. So I think actually, Pete, what you're looking for is the polling feature where you can you can hit the uh, green check marks at the top, and if you want to do a quick uh, yes. poll, hand raising is yes. more complicated and requires everyone putting their hands back down. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sarah, you've pointed that out to me before. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. So there. So so have you then? Did you start a poll then? I see there are some poll responses. Yeah. You didn't even have to so start a poll basically. So we do have at least one person who is not able to contact their team. So um, that uh, oh, I see. And Trish sent an email to the team member, but hasn't heard back yet. So yeah. So obviously, there's, you need to have two, two people uh, to make contact. So uh, there's some of this could be technical, and some of it could be just that people haven't gotten back to you. So um, I. The, the the general idea is that after you make initial contact, is that each team would find a way to to uh, engage that works the best for them. So there's always our course discussion page, uh, and it's fine for people to uh, to just create like a team one or team team two heading and have a discussion on our our team page where other people would be able to see it. Um, but it would clearly be uh, marked just for, for your team to participate in that discussion. That's a very public way of communicating, and communicating publicly is, uh, is sort of the norm with Wikipedia. Uh, but if you, some teams may prefer to just start a little email chain of their own uh, and just copy each other in. Some people might want to all work on their homework at the same time and use something like Google Hangout uh, to work together. So we wanted to encourage people to find a way to work together that makes sense for them. Uh, but it may be that this, this first contact has been a little more of a challenge than we anticipated. So um, let's let's see. Can we, Sarah, can we do another poll and uh, and have people let us know if they would like help in making contact with their team? Because uh, I think that would be a more useful more useful question. And then we can find out what kind of help people need. Sure, and all people have to do there is right underneath the talk button, underneath your own name, you see a little checkbox. And if you click on the checkbox, uh, you get options. Your options are yes or no. So the question is, do people need more help with 
contacting their teams. Everyone saying no. Everyone saying no. They don't need more help. Okay. The news is good. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I think next week, before we get into the uh, into the final project, I think we should do another check. And if people still have not gotten meaningful contact with their teams, I think we'll I think we'll want to recombine teams a bit um, because there may be people who signed up for the course and aren't really following through. I know that's always a possibility with online courses. So, um, so I think in that case, I'm going to move on. Um, and I would like to get back to the, the tour that I was giving last week of how a Wikipedia, uh, basically what the main buttons on a Wikipedia article are that sort of helps, helps you see how, uh, how the site functions. So um, I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to go back to the same article we were looking at last week. So MIT open course there. So we have something familiar to look at. So some of this will be review, but I, I think that for our, especially for our newer editors, it's going to be useful review. Um, if, if you find that I'm going too slowly or too fast or something, why don't you just make a note in the, in the chat window and Sarah will see it and, uh, and let me know if, uh, if we need to make a change. Anyway, so right now we're looking at the, at at the article page. Uh, so the, the, art, the article tab and the read tab will be highlighted whenever you're looking at an actual Wikipedia article. Uh, and uh, just to review br briefly the concept of a namespace, anything that is, is, an, is a part of the, the body of work of Wikipedia is going to be just a simple name. There's, there's just uh, MIT OpenCourseWare is, is the name by itself. But if you see something with a colon at the beginning, like I'm going to click here on the talk tab, uh, the article is going to, uh, the, the page is going to come up and it says talk colon MIT open courseware. That bit before the colon is referred to as a namespace and it's a way of dividing up pages on Wikipedia. So everything that, that has a namespace uh, outside of the main encyclopedia, the purpose is really is for building the encyclopedia as opposed to just being the encyclopedia. So there's, there's the talk namespace, there's the Wikipedia namespace, which, ha which has policies and dispute resolution processes, um, a manual of style, wiki project. So lots of different things happen in the Wikipedia namespace, uh, and there's several others as well. So right now we're looking at the talk namespace, and so this is, this is something that every, every single page on Wikipedia has an additional page assigned to it for discussion about that page. So in this case, we were looking at the MIT OpenCourseWare article. Now we're looking at the MIT OpenCourseWare talk page. And this is here primarily to, ha to have discussion about how to improve the article. And if we scroll down in it, we'll see that people are bringing up things that they see as, as problems or opportunities to improve the article. And these first few uh, look like just one person was bringing it up. But then as we go down and we see some things indented a couple of different times, that generally indicates that people are talking back and forth. And if you look at the signature at the end of each comment, this first one was left by someone named Taku. Uh, and this is going all the way back to 2003. And then this next one, uh, there was a response uh, about nine days later by someone named Dan Pichette. And then someone else named Maru came in. And so each one indented a piece. Uh, and then when Taku came back, uh, he or she did not indent. The indentations are something that there's no firm rule about how that's supposed to work. Typically, every time you make a new comment, you should make it a different indent level so that it's visually clear uh, that you're a different person. But different people kind of have different theories about exactly how much you should indent. And basically, you just shouldn't worry too much about that. It will be a little confusing to follow discussions, and that's just sort of the nature of how things are on Wikipedia. Um, and they are working on improving that software, but I think it'll be probably at least a year or so before there's a major change with how discussions work. So um, this is one of those things that we sort of have to just use in its imperfect form. So, uh, so you can see how a talk page will have multiple different discussions about improving the article. Uh, at the top of a talk page, actually the first thing that you see on an article's talk page usually is not actually discussion about the article at all, but is a series of beige boxes. Uh, 
the, this this first one here um, is you'll you'll often but not always see that explains what the purpose of a talk page is. So basically, just summarizes the things that I told you and gives you a few other pointers. Um, and then below that, we have that this particular article is a member of four different wiki projects. So a wiki project is a, a collection of pages designed to help uh, volunteer Wikipedia contributors who have a shared interest in a topic to collaborate on that topic. So uh, wiki project education, uh, I'm just going to click on that really briefly. We'll get a, a quick look at it. Uh, this is going to be a series of of pages that uh, that talk about what what is there relating to education on Wikipedia, what needs work. Um, so this is a very straightforward wiki project page, um, just divided up into sections like a Wikipedia article. Uh, but you'll find as you look at some other ones that some of them have more sophisticated layouts. They have a tab interface um, with different, uh, you know, sort of more visually clear ways of dividing things up. And then on each one of these, if you click the show button, it's going to give you a little bit more information about that. So here, this tells you a little bit about Wiki Project Education. Um, so you'll you'll get used to this show hide button on some of these uh, drop down features on Wikipedia. So these are it's it's a little counterintuitive that these would be on the talk page since this is a page for discussion. Really, they're here because there's no better place for them. So this is this is information that it's useful to keep in, about an article. It's not a part of the article obviously, and so people have put it on the talk page instead. Um, and so the, the talk page ends up sort of serving a dual purpose of keeping some information about the article. It also might uh, show the history of the article if it's been through peer review processes uh, and things like that, and then also for discussion about the article. So let's, I'm going to click back onto the, the main article here. And now the next tab I want to show you is the edit button. Um, actually, I'm going to log into my demo account uh, to make sure that this looks pretty similar to what you'll see. So I actually have these two buttons, edit and edit source. So edit um, is going to take us to a, a feature that's under development called the visual editor, uh, which is going to be a much, much nicer uh, way to edit Wikipedia. It's going to be uh, allow you to just do formatting the way that you would in a word processor, uh, make things bold and italic and uh, bullet lists and things like that without knowing any code. Uh, but that is under development, and it'll probably be a while before it's fully functional. So in this class, we're going to be focusing more on the edit source, which will uh, give you more of an understanding of what's going on under the surface. Uh, and hopefully, it'll get easier someday if that uh, the visual editor is is complete. So I'm going to click on the Edit Source button. And here we are having our first look at wiki text or wiki code. So if you just pause for a moment and look at this, um, you're going to see that it's, it's, it's very much like English. <laughs> it's, uh, it, you can pretty well see uh, the sentences and the structure of the text. But of course, there are bits of code in here. You see these double brackets. Um, here we have a, a vertical bar. So um, this, this piece here is kind of an interesting bit. Um, so it makes it a little hard to read and a little hard to see what's going on. But the main thing, if, if you want to, if you want to edit a, a piece of text that say in the second paragraph, you should be able to look through and pretty easily find the second paragraph. Uh, in this case. It's uh, it's right here. Um, and then if you wanted to change something in the sentence, you know, say if you wanted to change the word exams to test, uh, you would just click on that and type it in. So if you're just making changes to, uh, to the English language portion of it, you can kind of find your way around the code and make those changes. But it is going to be important to start to learn some of the, the pieces of the code. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, the important parts right here, and then uh, the homework is going to be a, a guide in kind of digging in a little bit deeper, uh, some of the readings and links that you'll find on the homework page. Uh, but some of the very most basic and important parts are how you make an internal link, so a link to another Wikipedia article. Um, so the double square brackets are the main way that you make a link. So in this case, Walter Lewin is a person's name. 
you just put double brackets around it, and when you go down and save the page, it's going to turn into a blue link, and when you click on it, you're going to get to that person's biography. Um, but in many cases, you don't actually want the text on the page to be exactly the same as the title of the Wikipedia article. So um, let's use this one as an example. We have uh, open access publishing, uh, open access parentheses publishing is the exact title of a Wikipedia article uh, because there are a number of different things that open access can refer to. So there's a separate article for the meaning of it uh, that refers to publishing. And then openly available is the text that we want in the sentence and that, that shows up in the sentence. So let's, I'm going to just scroll down here and I'm going to click the preview button. This is going to show us how it looks on the Wikipedia page above the uh, above the, the code that we were looking at. So what we were just looking at is this openly available bit. So it do, you notice it doesn't say open access publishing in the actual text. So let's scroll down and, and look at the code again. And the reason for that is this vertical bar in the middle. So when you have you have your double brackets that indicate that it's going to be an in internal link in Wikipedia, and then you put the title of the page that it's supposed to go to, and then a vertical bar, and then you type in the text that you want to actually appear on the page. Um, if you want to make external links, it gets uh, it, it, there's a similar format, but it's it's different in a couple of important ways. So I'm going to just enter something down here to demonstrate it to you. I'm going to just uh, type in HTTP colon slash slash. Um, I'm just going to say example.com. So that would be the web page that you want to link to. And then if you put a space, not a vertical bar, but a space for an external link, uh, and that's because a vertical bar could actually be part of the, the URL um, on, on an external link. So you put a space, and then you say text to go in article and then close your bracket. So you see it's the same general concept, but you have the, the space instead of the vertical bar to separate the text from the link. Now, usually in Wikipedia, when you have external links, they're actually going to be in the, uh, you're going to want them to show up down below in the references section as opposed to appearing in the text. Let's look at the article again to see what I mean. Um, all of these, well, most of these links that we see in here are internal links are links to other Wikipedia articles. And then when you have a citation uh, to an external website, that's typically going to show up as a footnote. And when you click on it, it jumps you down to this references section. So here we have a link that it goes to an external website, not to a Wikipedia article. So um, learning how to do references properly is going to be one of the uh, one of the things you're, you're going to need to learn early on if you want to be uh, adding to articles, adding content to articles. So uh, let's just take a, a quick look at that as well. I'm going to go back down to my edit screen here. And I'm going to just show you, for, for the time being, I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to show you an easy way to add a new uh, citation. It's a little bit more complicated if you want to edit an existing one, so we'll leave that for another time. But if you want to put in a new one, there's a nice, easy way to do it. In the toolbar, you can click on this Cite button, which drops down a little more in the toolbar. And then on the left-hand side, you'll see this Templates menu. And then you can choose one of these, Cite Web, if it's a web page, or news, if it's a newspaper article, book, or academic journal. Uh, if you don't really know which one, if it's like a newspaper's website, don't worry about it too much. Just pick one. They do pretty much the same thing. Uh, but when you choose that, you get this nice form. And then you can put in the last name and first name of the author, the URL that it links to. Um, the access date, if you just click on the calendar here, it's going to automatically put in today's date, so that's the date that you accessed it, which is different from the date that it was published on. Um, and then you don't really need to worry about these bottom two, ref name and ref group. Uh, ref name is nice if you want to use the same citation multiple places in the article, but I'm not going to get into that right now. We can come back to that uh, as we get deeper into editing Wikipedia maybe next week. Uh, anyway, once you've filled in this form, all you do is click insert. So I'm going to just type in some random text. 
um, so we can see what's going to happen. Uh, you can preview it in here. So that's, this is going to show you first. It's going to show you the code that it's going to put in. And then uh, once you've done that, you can actually show parsed preview. So this is going to show you what it looks like as a citation. Not very useful because I typed in such junk, but that's going to show you the act, how it will actually appear on the page. And then if you click Insert, it's going to take that code and put it right where the cursor was in the edit window. And now if you go down, I'm not going to save the page, but I will. And then you always want to put in an edit summary, so I'm going to say added a citation. And then I'm going to click Show Preview. And we should get our junky looking citation showing up in the references. There it is, citation number four. So, um, so hopefully that gives you a, a bit of an idea about how the wiki code works. Uh, if you're feeling a little in intimidated by this, uh, you're not alone. This is uh, kind of a hurdle that everyone starting off with Wikipedia or Wikipedia. Uh, has to deal with, and uh, please ask questions, try things out. One one really important thing uh, to keep in mind is you really can't break anything on Wikipedia. You might, if you're working on an actual article, uh, it's possible that you'll irritate people that they'll that they'll undo what you did. They won't be really angry if you just made it, make a mistake. They might just they would probably just undo it. But um, but you're much safer working in the, the pages that are dedicated to our course. So your own user page, your user talk page, uh, and also our uh, writing Wikipedia articles are our week one and week two pages, and uh, probably most importantly, our discussion page. So if you want to get a feel for doing any kind of formatting, um, a, a great place to play around with it is, is any of those places. Uh, also, one thing that uh, there are links to this uh, in uh, in the week one homework is uh, is your sandbox. So if you want to just start a whole new article that is if you're if you're thinking about starting an article on Wikipedia but you're not ready to publish it because you have some things to learn, you can click on this sandbox link up at the top, and that's going to give you a uh, a page which is it's publicly viewable. It's not it, it you know other people may see it. Uh, if they're looking at your, you know, your edit history or something like that, but nobody's going to really come looking for this, and nobody's going to care if it's, um, you know, if there are mistakes or problems in it. Um, about the only thing that you would have to worry about is if you were doing something like, uh, you know, if you were publishing information that's supposed to be private or uh, slandering somebody or, or something like that. But if you're just playing around with ideas, you can do pretty much anything you want to on your sandbox page. Um, what are, I'm going to Pause and see if we have any questions that have come up before I move ahead. Hi there. Um, one thing that came up is that the rest of us users don't see the edit source tab. You're the only, I believe, you're the only one who sees that. We all just see edit. When okay. we click edit, we see what you see when you click edit source. Just, okay. just in case anyone else got stuck on that. Um. So thanks for pointing that out. I didn't realize that. I think that is probably, as I said, the visual editor is something that's under development. And I think at different times, so probably the time when I created this account, which was maybe two months ago, uh, this was the default way that it would show up. And I think I think they're kind of changing that around as it goes through its development process. So sorry for leading you astray there, but it sounds like people are finding the button. Okay, so. I'm going to I'm going to move on and show the history screen for for those that were in the lab session or watched the archive of the lab. Uh, you got a bit of a look at this last week, uh, but I think uh, there's enough information here that it's probably worth a bit of review. Um, oh, actually, this is not a good example page. Back to our MIT Open Courseware page and click View History again. <clears throat> so. Every single page on Wikipedia, uh, whether it's an article or a user page or a talk page, keeps every revision to that page. This is sort of, it's sort of the same idea as the track changes feature in Microsoft Word, um, where it's always possible to roll back to an earlier version or to see what the changes were between an earlier version and the current version. So this is a very dense screen. There's a lot of information to absorb here, uh, but I'm going to 
go through it line by line and show you uh, what the main features are. And this is going to be something that you'll find is really useful as you're uh, as you're understanding what's happened with the articles that you're editing, uh, what kinds of edits have been made previously, how recently people have edited, edited them, and things like that. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to skip past the first few lines at the top of this screen, and I'll come back to those after. Uh, but these, the main content of the history screen, every line represents one revision of the article, with the most recent one at the top. And I'm going to just go across this, starting with the time and date stamp, uh, and then I'll come back and tell you about the beginning of the line. So this, uh, the the time and date is uh, is listed here, and that is where you would click if you want to actually get to that revision of the article. So if you're coming back to this article on OpenCourseWare, uh, say you know maybe you remember. Uh, reading something in this article and you're looking at it now and you don't see that information anymore, and you think, well, that was a year or two ago. Maybe maybe you remember it was about two years ago. So you can go through the history until you start to find uh, 2011. So I'm just scrolling down and here I see May 2011. Uh, and if if you if you don't see it, if you get to the bottom and don't see it, it's because it cuts off after 50 edits. So you can just go through. Uh, to the 50 older edits, or you can click on one of these to show up to 500 edits all in one screen. Anyway, as, let's say I'm interested in what it looked like in May 2011. You click on that, and it's actually going to show you that version of the article. It gives you this nice pink bar at the top that reminds you that you're looking at an older version of the page. But apart from that, you're basically looking at what the article looked like at that time. So one thing that jumps out to me, the current version of the article has a video over here in the upper right, and we don't see that here. So that has been added in the last two years. Uh, the next piece of uh, the next piece of information in this line is the person who made that most recent edit. So this person's username is Nina Custard. If you click on that, you're going to see that person's user page. Hopefully, everyone knows what a user page is basically by now, because uh, most of you have created yours as part of the homework in week one. Uh, but this is basically a place where people describe themselves with more or less detail. Uh, depending on who they are and what they feel like sharing. Uh, this is a good opportunity to point out what the difference is between a red and a blue link. Uh, Mina's Custard, we know, has a user page because the link is blue. So if we click on that, we're going to see that there is a page here. It's not a very detailed page. It just says, this is my user page. But the page exists. If the page doesn't exist at all, then there's going to be a red link. So when you start editing Wikipedia, you start off with a red link for your user page. Um, and uh, that's, this is true of any link on Wikipedia. If we're just editing an article, um, let's say we were editing MIT OpenCourseWare and we wanted to add a link to, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, open education resources or something like that. We wanted, we wanted to add a link to something that we're not sure exists. So you can type it in and put it in with the, with the double brackets. And you can save that, and it may have a red link in the article, which means the, that it doesn't go anywhere. But this is one of the ways that Wikipedia grows. Now that link exists, and it makes it easy for someone to come along, click it, and start that article. Uh, anyway, moving along in our row here, after Mina's Custard's name, we have two links to this person's talk page. This is their user talk page. This is where if you wanted to address a comment to this person that's specific to the person as opposed to something that's a general comment about an article, then you would click here and leave them a comment. It's still publicly viewable, uh, but it, it's their page. So, other, so you might find sometimes if you leave a comment or a question for someone that a different person answers. People, uh, people develop editing relationships with, uh, with other people. When, they're, when, uh, when people are interested in the same topic, they'll often keep an eye on each other's talk pages, and sometimes people will jump in and answer on each other's behalf. If we left a, a question for me as custard and he or she is off on vacation and doesn't show up for a few weeks, maybe someone else would come along uh, that knew the answer and just leave the answer there. Uh, another thing to be aware of is that sometimes people answer questions on their own user talk page, and sometimes people will uh, click on your user talk page to answer you. Uh, so there are kind of pros and cons to each way of doing it. If they answer on their own page, it keeps the conversation all together in one place. But then you have to remember to go back and, and look for their answer. Um, 
if they leave it on your talk page, then you're immediately alerted to it, but the conversation gets a little bit fragmented. So just be aware that both of those things can happen, uh, and that might help you to understand dynamics that can otherwise be kind of confusing. After that, there's a link to this, the history of this person's contribution. This is a screen that's going to look a lot like this history screen that we're looking at right now, except it's going to be this per, a history of this person's edits to multiple different pages. So I'm going to just click on that, and we'll get a quick look. Um, only as quick as my computer. So this is not exactly the same, because instead of the time and date stamps, it's actually showing us what the different pages are that this person has edited. Uh, but you can see it's the same general layout. It's the same basic format. Uh, moving along, next uh, there's a little M that tells you just that the person clicked that it's a minor edit when they saved that edit. That's not really all that important. So we're, I'm going to skip that. The next two tell you how big the page was. So it, it's measured in bytes. Uh, for the English language or for the Roman alphabet, a byte is more or less just a letter or a character. So this tells you that there were uh, about 8,600 bytes in the article at that time. And then the next one tells you in this edit how many did that person add or remove. So in, in total, this person removed 29 letters from the article. It could be that they, you know, that they added 30 characters, or that they, that they added one character and removed 30 other characters. So it doesn't tell you a whole lot, but it does give you a general sense of whether they were adding or removing content. And if it's a lot of content, it's going to be bold. I think it, I forget exactly what the threshold is, uh, but when someone adds like, you know, a thousand characters, maybe that's the, the threshold. Um, here, actually, we have one that this person added 669 letters. So I don't know, maybe it's 500. Uh, and then after that, we see one of the most important pieces, reverted edits by, so this, this here, this piece in italics, is the edit summary. So as, uh, as I mentioned briefly when we were looking at the edit screen, every time you make an edit, there'll be an edit summary button near the save button. And you should get in a habit very early from the, from the beginning of always leaving something to describe what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, and this is a good example of why. Because when you do that, it's going to show up in the history screen. And when other people are trying to understand what's happened in that article, they'll more easily be able to see it just by scanning through that. So in this case, this person added, reverted uh, the previous edit. And they didn't explain why. It would be a little better if they explained why. Um, but maybe if we, if we look at what the edit was, we'll understand why. So I'm going to come back to that uh, in just a moment. But first, I'm going I'm, I'm to finish off describing this line. So the very last thing on the line is this undo button. So that is how, if you wanted to do, if you if you wanted to perform a reversion like this person did, that's how you do it. So let's say we want to revert what Mina's custard did. Uh, we would just click on that, and it's going to automatically uh, it's going to automatically change the text to what it was before that person's edit, and it's going to give us this view, which we're going to look at a little more closely in just a moment, of the before and the after of the, the wiki code, what the wiki code looks like before and after the edit. And then you can scroll down, and you see it automatically fills in undid revision, uh, this revision number by this person. Um, and then if you go to the end of this line, then we could just add to it and say, this looks like and it is. Uh, now, it's, keep in mind, I'm not saving this edit, so I'm just making things up. I'm not saying this is vandalism. I haven't looked at it. But this is, uh, it's, 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 the more you can explain in an edit summary, the better, especially when you're doing something that might be misunderstood or controversial or confusing. Um, and then, uh, so I'm not going to save the page, but that's what you, you would do to make it live. So I'm going to go back to our screen here. And as promised, I'm going to come back to the beginning of the line. These, these pieces here, current, previous, and these buttons, these are all for allowing you to compare two different revisions. So let's start with the button. Let's say that we're interested in what this person, Cheerios with Milk, did in these two edits. I'm going to click the button just before uh, the first edit that Cheerios with Milk did, and then I'm going to click the most recent edit this person did, and then I'll click Compare Selected Revision. 
So here we have this view again. And on the left hand side we get first we get a, a summary. So it tells us this is the revision as of this date and time, who the most recent editors, what editor was at that time, what that most recent edit edit summary was, and it's going to give us links to browse forward or back in the edit screen. Uh, and then you get the same information for the current edit. Notice that it is Cheerios with milk is the most recent editor there. And it even tells us here one intermediate revision by one user is not shown. And as you scroll down, uh, on the left you see what it looked like before and on the right after, and you have highlights for what the changes are. So in this case, uh, I don't know if you can see that highlight on the semicolon. This person deleted a semicolon and re replaced it with the word so. Uh, and then if you scroll down, and it, and it gives you a few lines of context around it. It doesn't show you the whole text, um, but it does give you a few lines of context so you can uh, see what those changes are. And then as you go down, uh, this person also changed. They are currently projected to the program is currently projected. So uh, these screens are really important. To, this is when you want a more detailed view when the edit summary just isn't enough for you and you can't either the person didn't leave an edit summary or you can't understand what they're trying to say, um, or if you're trying to confirm it. Uh, if you think, in some cases, they might not be entirely forthright in their edit summary. Uh, so this is the most authoritative version of what actually happened to change the article. So uh, at the top of the screen here, I told you I was going to come back to this. These are really just different settings that you can play around with. I'm not going to devote a lot of time to this right now, um, but most of it I think is fairly self-explanatory. This top bit lets you, if, if, if we're only interested in the stuff from a certain uh, date or a, a certain year, a certain month in a certain year, we could choose that and reload the screen and skip back to that time period. Uh, tag filter, let's not worry about. This next line is, uh, these, these are some useful and interesting tools. Uh, these, are, these are tools that are not a part of Wikipedia, but they're made by people of the Wikipedia community that let you do things like search in a revision history. Like if there was text in the article at some time in the past and you don't remember exactly when, you might be able to find it with this tool. Um, contributors is going to give you a summary of who are the people who have most actively contributed to this page. Um, number of watchers, how many people have put this article on their watch list. Um, if you don't remember the, the watch list, you add a page to your watch list by clicking the star. Uh, and then if you want to see changes to the articles in your watch list, you can always a view, which again is going to look much like this history screen by clicking on your watch list. So this would tell you how many different people are, are watching this article. Uh, and then there's page view statistics. Um, and actually, as long as we're in this vein, I want to click back to the article and show you one other uh, link that, that gives you information about an article. This is a newer feature. Um, if you look in the toolbox on the left hand side, there's this link for page information. And this also is going to give you just a bunch of statistics about the article just right here in Wikipedia. Sometimes those external tools might take a while to load or they might just not load. It can be a little bit buggy. Uh, but this is something that will always load up a lot more quickly. And it tells you some of the things are, are redundant. So this tells you 71 people are watching the page. We don't even have to load that external tool anymore. So I am going to pause and see if any questions have come up. And then uh, I see I've only left about uh, 10 minutes to talk about identity, so I'd like to get to that. There have been some interesting uh, questions. I'm, I'm collecting them, and what we could plan to do, Pete, is uh, I can copy and paste them onto the talk tab for the course, and that way they can be answered publicly where people can see the answers. And gen generally speaking, that is a, a great thing to do, is just post questions on that, on that talk tab. Um, because um, if you contact us separately, uh, then others don't get to benefit from reading the responses. Uh, okay. So the questions that have come up are being noted. I'm just setting them to the side for the moment. OK. Well, I should have some time immediately after class to address those questions. So um, I will, uh, I will uh, put some answers on the talk page. Uh, probably in the next hour after class. So, um, let's see. I, so I'd like to talk about identity a bit. Um, 
And I'm going to start with that by looking at a couple of, uh, of user pages. So I'll just pull up my own since, uh, since I know it. Uh, so this is uh, this is sort of this is one end of the spectrum, really, of, of how public people are on Wikipedia. So on my talk page, I've chosen in my username, Pete Forsyth, and also in the way I present myself on my talk page to use my real name and to be very upfront about uh, how this connects to my other work and what I do on Wikipedia. I've tried to put in a few paragraphs that explain why I care about Wikipedia and what kinds of articles I like to work on. Um, and then as you scroll down, uh, these, are, these are some of the articles I have put the most work into. Um, and then on the right hand side you'll see uh, there's people will often give each other what's known as barn stars which are sort of awards for uh, sometimes silly things and sometimes big accomplishments when they've worked on an article uh, and you know when they've worked really hard on an article or when they've worked through a difficult dispute or something like that um, so this is this is kind of one end of the spectrum and uh, you know I'm I, so I'm seeing from uh, from Lit Jade's question, uh, Dragonfly67. I uh, know this person somewhat, and I'm thinking this might make a good example of. And I, I will give you a more uh, detailed answer uh, after the class, but just let's just take a look at this person uh, since, since he's come up. So this person <laughs> has specified he's not a dragonfly; is a person. Person and also was not born in 1967. So uh, there's not really much of any information about who he or she is uh, or his or her purpose in being here. There's maybe some hints at, at personal information throughout here. But this is a, a pretty important part of Wikipedia culture is that you know, having grown out of, of sort of hacker culture and internet culture, there, there's, a, there's, there's a very strong ethos of anonymity. A lot of people feel that it's, uh, it's very important that they shouldn't have to be known, that the important thing about what they do on Wikipedia is the quality of their edits, not who they are or what credentials they bring. Um, for some people, this is really just a principled matter. matter. For other people, it's, uh, it's, it's a little more practical, like uh, you know, maybe they don't really want uh, you know their business associates or their boss knowing that they're you know totally obsessed with uh, Beverly Hills 90210 and work on you know articles about that you know all weekend um, or or maybe they're uh, editing something that's uh, that's very highly controversial uh, and they're actually worried that people that there might be real life repercussions from people who strongly disagree with them that that someone might want to track them down or call them on the phone or something like that. Um, you know, this is something that it's, it's very rare that something like that happens, but it has happened. Uh, Wikipedia is is you know be, for all the reasons that we're learning about Wikipedia, it's an important resource, and people care passionately, sometimes too passionately, uh, what is on Wikipedia. So if you think that you might end up, you know, if you're, if if your biggest interest in working on Wikipedia is something like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, uh, and you're really uh, wanting to devote your energy towards the most controversial aspects of it, that might be a case where you might think twice about whether you want your real name attached to it or not. Um, but an issue that, uh, that doesn't combine very neatly with this is the idea of a conflict of interest. So there's actually a, a Wikipedia page on conflict of interest. Um, I'm going to type in the full name here. Um, and I think I'm going to point out here that there's that when you're looking for something on Wikipedia, often a, a good uh, using this sort of search ahead feature can be a really useful tool. So in this case, we're looking at Wikipedia policy or essays or something about conflicts of interest. So we start off by typing in Wikipedia colon to get into the Wikipedia namespace, and then type in. It, just as soon as I typed in conflict, it pulled up this list, uh, and then you're able to go directly to it. So as you're trying to figure out policies and guidelines and things like that on Wikipedia, that can be a useful trick. 
uh, you, you also might find yourself uh, wanting to use these shortcuts, uh, and I can describe those later. I don't want to throw too much at you right now, so I'm going I'm, I'm to skip that for now. Anyway, a, uh, so a conflict of interest, of course, arises when someone wants to edit, uh, for example, the article about the company that they started or uh, the university that they teach at or something like that, where they may have interests other than Wikipedia's general desire to present neutral, factual information to the world at heart. They might, they might be interested in promoting that entity, or, or maybe they're uh, writing about their competitor or um, you know, a person that they know well or something like that. So if you have a conflict of interest, you're not forbidden from editing Wiki that, that Wikipedia article, but there are, there's a lot here to discuss what you should keep in mind. You can see this is a pretty long page. We're just looking at the table of contents right now. So lots and lots has been said on this subject. Uh, and if this is something that, if, if you think you're going to be working in areas around a conflict of interest, it's probably worth reading through this page um, somewhat closely, or at least scanning through and looking at the different headings. Um, but the, uh, the reason I bring it up uh, when talking about anonymity is that, of course, there is this fundamental uh, tension between the idea that it's people's right to be private and the idea that we want to be aware when someone is working uh, in a conflict of interest. So my general advice around this is if working on articles that you're closely related, related to in your professional or personal life, if that's a, a, a thing that you, that you think you're going to want to be doing a fair amount, I would say that's a good reason to use your real name on Wikipedia. Um, or if you really don't want to, to at least be very clear that you have a connection. So on your user page, you, even if you have uh, a pseudonym or a fake name, um, you would still want to say, I work for MIT OpenCourseWare or something like that. You would, you would want to mention what your relationship is to, some of the, to the things that you're going to be editing in a conflict of interest around. And then you also, if you're going to make substantial changes, you should mention things like that either on the article's talk page or in the edit summaries when you're making the edits. If you're just fixing a typo, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. But if you're going to be adding a new reference or adding a paragraph or deleting a reference, deleting uh, some content from an article, uh, and there might be someone might think that your connection to the article would influence that more than your desire to build Wikipedia according to its own standards, then leave a note on the talk page saying, I'm, I'm deleting this paragraph, and here's why I think that's a good idea, even though I stand in a conflict of interest. Here, here's why, in reference to Wikipedia's policies and values, uh, I think that would be a good idea. And so when you do that, you sort of insulate yourself against any insinuation that you're trying to sneak around. And you, you basically, you're, you're respecting your fellow editors in um, giving them relevant information about your edit. So we're nearing the end of the hour. Um, does that bring up questions, thoughts, ideas? I don't really know uh, of the people who are with us today how many are in a, in a situation where a conflict of interest might be a concern. Peter EJ is asking a related question right now okay. about how to understand what is a conflict of interest and what is not. Do you want me to read it? Sure. Well, I've got it pulled up now. I've worked with the UN in the area of environmental education and education for sustainable development. Would it be a conflict if I wanted to edit the EnviroEd article? So um, I think that's I think that's a judgment call, and different people would have different opinions. Um, I, I, my general advice is to always err on the side of caution. So just, uh, you know, as I was describing, just, just mention it on that talk page. So why don't we pull up that, that article, Envi Environmental Education. Is that mentioning? So if you think you're going to be putting a fair amount of work into this article, the first thing you might want to do is to click on the article's talk page 
and then uh, start a new section. And my computer's being slow to load this. Uh, but we're just—I would just suggest you start a new new section and say, you know, this is who I am, and this is what my background is, and I'm looking to improve this article in the next few weeks, months. Uh, and the 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 main thing here. Let me let me pull up an example of this so that we're not uh, just going completely blind. Um, one from memory here. So this is a a friend of mine who was working on the article about the company that he worked for at the time. So here's his user page, um, and he describes on his user page where he worked. And then I'm going to just click into his uh, his user contributions. So this link down in the lower left. This is similar to the history screen we were looking at before. Uh, we also looked at a user contributions page before. And so here we see a similar screen that shows all his different edits. And I'm going to click on Pixatel is the article he was working on. So I'm going to click on the talk page for Pixatel. So I just came to this page because I knew I was likely to find a link to the article that I'm looking for. And there it is. And you see here this first section called proposed overhaul. So he says, I would like to propose, propose an overhaul of this article. Uh, and he also says, I am an employee of Ontier. I and my company value Wikipedia and, and have no wish to use it for an inappropriate promotion. My initial edits have met some resistance. So he had already worked on it a little bit. So I've made a point of reading through relevant policies, guidelines, and essays. So this one that I was just uh, pointing out to you, uh, the conflict of interest page. Uh, and then there are these other policy pages as well. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to click on the conflict of interest page. I'm going to show you how to find these other policy pages. Um, so some of them will be linked in in the homework, but as a general rule, you might want to look at them. People might make reference to them when there are discussions about what goes into an article. Anytime you're on a policy page or a guideline page, you will find uh, a navigation box like this. So here, this one has core content policies. So these are policies relating to the content of articles. Uh, and then there are other policies that are about user behavior, like um, uh, you know, basically be civil, be, be nice to each other, things like that. So you'll find them in different, uh, you know, sort of categorized in different ways. But you see here there are these links to some of the main policies on Wikipedia. Uh, we can also scroll down to the bottom of the article, and we'll find a much more thorough um, list of Wikipedia policies and guidelines. So you can see there are a whole lot of them. The first one listed here, five pillars. This is uh, the most central policies of Wikipedia, uh, but then you can browse around and find the important ones. So anyway, I, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but uh, just to get back to your question, the main thing to do is to express that you understand that there might that there might be a conflict or that someone might perceive might, might think there's a conflict. And that you are committed to working within Wikipedia's policies, uh, even though you might have, uh, even though you might have that potential conflict. So if you say it up front, it can really uh, lessen the possibility of unpleasant arguments because then people feel that they can hold you accountable to that. They can always point back and say, "Wait, didn't you say that you were here to cover this in a neutral way?" I think that what you're doing now might not be neutral, might be influenced by your past connection. It's basically setting a setting a baseline for having that kind of discussion if anyone ever feels like it's necessary. And that can really go a very long way towards preventing uh, disagreements and and, uh, and unpleasant interactions. So I hope that made sense. Peter, because it's the end of the hour and people are starting to log off, I want to break in um, and say that for for users who are not, just in case people have not seen my notes about this on the Etherpad or here, people who are not logged into their accounts right now will not see um, updates that we make to the home page. That is the bug that's in the system that was preventing people from getting into week two. So until they sort out this bug, um, just be sure that you are logged into your uh, Wikipedia account.
or else you, you won't be seeing the most up-to-date class content. Thank you for mentioning that. Really unfortunate bug uh, that we're just discovering today. So, uh, so thank you for bearing with us. I think anyone who reached us today probably figured out their way around that. So we will find a way to get that information out to the rest of the students. Anyway, uh, I hope that you will join us for our lab session uh, 47 hours from now. Uh, so same, same time, same beginning time as this week's class. Uh, these, as I've explained before, these are optional. Uh, but just so you understand, I, I think that these can be some of the most valuable, uh, one of the most valuable, valuable components of the class. Uh, these are sessions where uh, I don't prepare anything ahead of time like I do with these classes, uh, but instead just take people's questions and ideas. And uh, you know, if you're working on an article and have questions about it or have uh, you know, questions about what it might make sense to do, or if you're encountering, uh, you're getting talk, talk page messages from people you don't know, things like that, uh, just come to the lab session and ask about it. And we usually have enough time to get to everyone's questions. Uh, also, uh, please do work through things like that with your team as well. Uh, if you run into something unfamiliar and you want other people who may not be fully experienced, but you want other people to help you puzzle it through, feel free to ask your teammates and try to help out your teammates when, when they have questions. So thanks for coming, and I will see you either in the lab or in next week's, next week's class. Thank you all. I'm sorry, one more reminder. Uh, the questions that were asked in the chat, I will be answering in the next hour or so on the page on Wikipedia for that. Again, the, the shortcut to that is WT colon Wikisu, which you can always type into the search bar in Wikipedia. Watch there. Bye-bye. So. So